Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, I'm Brittany Bonilla. I'm Zarina Cabrero. I'm Jody Afuso. I'm Kevin Cagello. And I'm Liam Miyasato. We're here on the campus of Moanalua High School near the historic Moanalua Valley on Oahu. Our students come from around the islands to be part of our learning community, making music in our award-winning marching band and orchestra, creating art with paints, clay, and even digital cameras and computers, constructing robotic innovation with technology and imagination, and pushing the limits of mind and muscle in the more than 50 Menehune athletic teams. Hiki no means can do, and you'll see just what students from our team of schools can do. This episode's team is made up of intermediate and high schools from across our island chain. From Kauai, there's Waimea Canyon Middle School. On Hawaii Island, we'll hear from Konawana High School. And Connections Public Charter School. We'll go to Maui for stories from Hana K-12 School and Seabury Hall. On Oahu, we have Wailua High and Intermediate, Alimanu Middle School, Punahou, and of course, your hosts for this show, Moana Lua High School, home of Na Menehune. On this show, you'll hear from diverse voices from across the island chain, telling stories that connect communities. On Hikino, can do. Before we introduce our first story, we'd like to recognize the grand organizations that made Hikino a reality. They believe that Hawaii could create the nation's first statewide student news network. They put their faith in us and said, can do. To them, we say mahalo. Now, on with the show. Moanalua High School, established in 1972, is located just outside of the city of Honolulu. In the center of campus is a popular hangout spot called Mini Square, where students eat, do homework, or just chill. In the middle of Mini Square is a blue and white Moanalua M, symbolizing our pride and spirit. Students at Punahou School take pride in the unique features of their school. Punahou is one of the few high schools in the nation that offers glass blowing. Students there talk to their glass blowing teacher, Mark Mitsuda, about what it's like to teach such a unique class. I learned to blow glass um, here at Punahou School, and. Um, when I was um, learning to blow glass, I think it, it appealed initially to, to a lot of different things. I loved the tools, I loved the heat, I loved working with the material, and I mean, there was just something about it that was so immediate, and the process was so fast that you know, I sort of instantly fell in love with it, and, and after that point, you know, I just decided to pursue it some more in art school. When I graduated from college and got my undergraduate degree, I got a job here back at Puno as a TA, and that was really sort of my first experience with teaching. Teaching glass blowing is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really difficult on, on a whole bunch of levels. It's, um, it's kind of like trying to teach someone to drive for the first time in the middle of Manhattan with freeway traffic going 80 miles an hour. You know, you're, you're trying to go and, and teach someone how to do something that, you know, there's, there's danger involved with it, it's hot, everyone is kind of anxious a little bit or there's a state of anxiousness that happens because there's a little bit of um, danger that's, that's always present. You're trying to communicate with people and, and give them instruction on how to do something so you're kind of talking to them but, you know, everyone kind of gets so focused on what it is that they're doing so that they don't get hurt or, you know, they're always thinking of it in the back of their mind that it, it's like the supremely, really um, challenging way to go about teaching something. One of the great things about glass blowing is that no one's ever done it until they've come here. Everyone starts off on the same foot. And, um, you know, there's really no predicting um, who's going to be really good at glass blowing. And, um, you know, to this day, I can't really predict who's going to be great at glass blowing until I see them actually go and step up to the furnace and actually take a gatherer out of the furnace. I think one of the things that um, I would hope that all students walk away from glass blowing is maybe a renewed sense of confidence that things that seemed impossible before are, are possible and maybe that they can learn something about maybe themselves that um, you know, even if you're trying something really to do something really hard, 
and difficult and maybe even scary, that it's something that um, that you can learn how to how to master and hopefully it'll give everyone you know a little bit more confidence when they go out and try something that's unusual or new or or um, or novel to them. If you'd like to stay connected with what's happening on Hikino, log on to our Facebook page. It's full of the photos and current info regarding the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hikino Can Do. It's a great way to get reminders about upcoming episodes. The Moana Loa Valley Trail takes you on an 11-mile hike to the top of the Ko'olau Summit. Along the way, you'll see seven stone arched bridges, ancient Hawaiian petroglyphs, and even what's left of the home formerly owned by Douglas Damon. Our story from Aliamanu Middle School takes us from Moana Lua Valley to the wide world. Many of their students have lived in at least three other states or countries in their young lifetimes. Petra Washington gives us a look at their nomadic experiences. I lived in China. In Italy. I lived in Japan. Belgium. I was born in Japan. Florida, Texas, and Boston. Korea, Japan, California. In Tokyo, Japan. The Philippines. Georgia for most of my life. South Carolina. I lived in Japan and Germany. How many places have you lived in your life? Here at Olimana Middle School, the majority of the students have lived outside Hawaii for half their life. However, many of them have called a foreign country home due to their parents being in the military. I lived in Belgium for about four and a half years. I lived outside the military base and I had Belgium neighbors and they spoke French and they tried to speak English to talk to us sometimes. I like Germany the best. Living there was a fun experience because I got to see different places. Like we could drive to Paris or take a plane to Venice and see all the water. One of my experiences was this job I had. Uh, I worked with a company at a modeling business, uh, clothing, pajamas, ba basic stuff. Uh, my sister did before me. And at one part, we got to work with these cartoon characters, which were very popular for teaching Japanese kids to learn English. And we got to work with a tiger in overalls named Shimajiro, and we loved him. He was a blast. Uh, we got to film and go places. We got to dress out, keep the clothes we dressed in. It was really fun. In addition to our military dependents, there are a few students who have immigrated here from other countries. Oh uh, well, I was born in China and I lived there till I was five years old. Every now and then we go back to visit. I haven't been back there for like three years already, but like when we do visit, we go there to visit our family because like half of my family lives there and half of them lives here. Of course, packing up and moving every few years can be difficult on families. However, many of these students tend to keep this positive outlook on their nomadic way of life. There were so many new opportunities and so many things that I got to participate that some people will never see or do in their entire lives. It's just fun traveling around the world and I'm glad my mom joined the army so we could travel a lot. And I don't want her to stop, like retire, because I still want to travel different places. Because I think all the places around the world are beautiful and fun and I just love different types of culture. So it seems that the benefits of world traveling outweighs the difficulty these modern-day nomads may face. With each new destination, a door is open into the next adventure in life. Reporting from Ollie Mountain Middle School, I'm Paige Washington for Hakey Now. <laughs> Moanalua Gardens, located along the Moanalua Freeway, is the home of a large monkey pod tree, known in Japan as the Hitachi tree, because the Japanese electronics company has used it as their corporate symbol since 1973. It is registered as an exceptional tree by the city and county of Honolulu and cannot be removed or destroyed without city council approval. Quilts not only can warm one's toes on a cold night, but can also be made to express ideas once reserved for canvas. From Konawina High School, Alexander Miyashiro reveals the inventive ways fabric can be transformed. Fire, nice. What comes to mind? Did you think of quilting? Of course not. So you might be asking yourself, why would a 17-year-old guy like myself be interested in quilting? I thought it was a concert. Instead, I discovered the craftsmanship and surprising images that this art form can produce. This award-winning quilt 
entitled Treasures of the Sea by Barbara Thomas, was voters' choice for the Fire and Ice exhibit. Next, we will hear from Barbara Thomas, who, with her passion and patience, quilted a subject matter that is close to her heart. The inspiration was really our versatility that we have here on our island, um, from the snow-capped mountains to the volcanic mountains to our oceans, which are just full of treasures and beauty and the tropical colors. So that was my inspiration, yes. It's an applique, but it is, you're coming back and you're working on it, and you hang it on a design wall, and I might hang it there for two or three weeks, put some things together and then come back one day and I think, oh, that just can't be, that has to be changed and you change it up. I would now like to introduce you to the members of the Aloha Quilters of Kona organization, Julia Rosencrantz. Julia crafted several of the hanging quilts for the show and also helped with the exhibit. And this year we chose the theme Fire and Ice to represent the extremes of our island. People are encouraged to make a quilt that fits that theme, Fire and Ice. But this year we also decided to do a special challenge. Because we have a room that we're using with rafters, we thought about uh, making long quilts that would hang from the rafters. And we decided to do a challenge to people to make a quilt of trees of Hawaii. Our main rule was that the trees had to either be endemic plants or plants that were brought by the early Polynesians called canoe plants. People could choose any one from a list of suggested trees. The only restriction was that the quilt had to be six feet long and two feet wide, which is quite an unusual dimension for a quilt. Along with quilts depicting images of native Hawaiian trees, Portraits and abstract designs were also illustrated. Today's quilters are not just limited to traditional quilting patterns that our grandmothers used. Quilting is an evolving art form that is both utilitarian and an object to admire. Quilts can also be used to help their communities. Recently, the Aloha Quilters presented a custom quilt to Habitat for Humanity. This is Alex Miyashiro reporting from Konawana High School for Hikino. We now take you to Connections Public Charter School on the island of Hawaii for a student voices feature. Let's hear how some of the students there responded to the question, why have you chosen to attend a public charter school? As here I feel like educational opportunity is something that teachers want to give and that they take it as a purpose in life to teach rather than just as a, a day job. It's a close-knit place and everybody knows everybody. It's very hands-on and the teachers actually help you. So that's pretty much why. It was actually my choice to come here. So. It became really approachable and I could meet everyone and say hello. So that's why I came here. A lot of opportunities. I'm attending a charter school because I like smaller schools and there's less problems with other people and people are more friendly. It's a lot more calm. For school, I don't know, everyone's all cool. Just down the hill from Moanalua High School lies Moanalua 99, formerly known as 99 Ranch. Students from Moanalua High School are drawn to this hangout spot, mainly for its diverse variety of food choices, from Hawaiian Lao Lao to Filipino Lumpia to Japanese Bento. From Japanese food, we go to Japanese culture. Do you know what sudo means? Kai Mitchell from Seabury Hall School on Maui tells us what it is. Seabury Hall School students on Maui folded 3,736 cranes for the victims of the March 2011 tsunami in Japan. In Japan, the crane is a symbol of honor, peace, and loyalty. According to the Japanese American National Museum, the Japanese regard the crane as a symbol of longevity because of the crane's fabled lifespan of a thousand years. The tradition of folding a thousand paper cranes provides healing and hope to both the givers and receivers of the cranes. It is said that if you fold a thousand paper cranes, or suru in Japanese, you will be granted your wish. For Seabury Hall student Shane Kiyota, the making of this suru was very personal. We have family in Japan and when the earthquake struck, there was no power so we couldn't really get in contact with any of our family members. And so really, we were really worried. Our family members, they were safe fortunately. And then, well, we just felt like we really needed to give back to like the community of Japan. 
So when we found out that Seabury Hall was going to do make these cranes in order to support Japan, me and a group of my friends, we got were so enthusiastic about it, so we decided to do our goal of making the traditional 1,000 cranes in order to show that support, and we achieved that goal. A remarkable example of a thousand cranes in action was Sadako Sasaki, an 11-year-old girl living in Hiroshima when the atomic bomb was dropped during World War II. She was exposed to radiation and soon developed leukemia. While hospitalized, she wanted to make a thousand cranes but only folded 644 before her death. In her honor, her friends completed the rest and buried them all with her. The students and teachers at Seabury Hall hope that the gift of cranes from Hawaii will help to bring healing to the people and land of Japan. This is Kai Mitchell from Seabury Hall for Hiki No. Located about two miles from Wanalua High School, Kahi Lagoon is the site of many activities and gatherings. Their largest crowds you will find here is during the canoe season when canoe clubs race it out for several days of competition. Wanalua High School's paddling team proudly participates in these competitions. Ocean debris and trash are becoming a more common sight at our local beaches. Janessa Jardine of Waimea Canyon Middle School shares how marine pollution can have an impact on human health and marine wildlife. Many people come to the beach to enjoy the sand and water, but instead, all you see is this. Remnants of old fishing nets and household plastics are continuously washing up along the shores of Hawaii. So where exactly are these items coming from? Well, most of the trash, the marine debris in Hawaii, comes from all over the Pacific. Um, a lot of it comes from Asia, some of it comes from North America. So some of it may be locally generated from the other Hawaiian Islands or from Kauai, but most of it comes from elsewhere in the Pacific. Although it may seem to be just an eyesore for us, for marine life, it can be life-threatening. Well, the, uh, there's two main ways. One is uh, entanglement hazard, so uh, net and rope, you know, animals can get tangled in it. Uh, the other way is uh, an ingestion hazard. So uh, we know that Laysan albatross, as they forage out in the open ocean, they'll pick up pieces of plastic, either unintentionally thinking it's a prey item or there may be um, fish eggs attached to it. So as they eat the fish eggs, they accidentally ingest the plastic too. If we are to maintain and protect our marine life, there are measures we can take. Try to reduce the amount of plastic that you use, if, it, if at all possible, um, by products that aren't wrapped in plastic or maybe unnecessary, like bottled water, for example. We don't really need bottled water for you know, everyday use. So reducing, of course, reusing and recycling. The three R's, those are three really good things to start off with. Helping out with beach cleanups, that's another really good way. You know, every time you go to the beach, if you just pick up a couple of pieces of trash and take it home with you, it's, you know, just a little bit. But if everyone did it and worked together, it would really make a difference. Pollution affects people in Hawaii a lot more because if our beaches are all polluted, tourists won't want to come and spend their money here. And tourism is like a really big deal in Hawaii because if we didn't have tourism, our economy wouldn't be as stabilized as it is now. It would be even worse than it is. I think that our ocean will be really dirty because people don't recycle and clean up the way that they should. We all need to do our part to keep our beaches clean because in the end... The cleaner we can keep our ocean, the better things will be for not only the, the marine life but for humans too. This has been Janessa Jardine from Waimea Canyon Middle School for Hikino. Salt Lake is home to an 18-hole championship golf course and the Honolulu Country Club. Wanalua High School students hold class banquets and grad parties here. The high school's annual Kina Ole Awards, honoring MOHS alumni and supporters, is also held here every spring. Our next story is an emotional and touching story about a teenage girl who must deal with some very demanding and taxing challenges. How she copes with these struggles on a daily basis is an inspiration for all. Kara Canessa Vanilla from Wailua High and Intermediate has a story. There's an old saying that goes, you can't judge a book by its cover. This may never be truer than with 15-year-old Kyra Armstrong. <laughs> Kyra's life may seem perfect, but it's far from trouble-free. Hey, Dad. My father has been deployed five times, and this is his first time in Afghanistan, but he's been to Iraq four other times. While her father is gone, Kyra has extra responsibilities at home 
due to her mother's medical condition. My mother just had two heart attacks a few months ago and the, she just found out actually a few weeks ago that she's got chronic heart disease. Kyra has a challenge that most teens don't usually face. Kyra is suffering from a bone tumor on her hip that will eventually turn into cancer, which the doctors don't know how to treat. Prior to being deployed, her father described Kyra's tumor. Then there is the type that she has, which is like a, it just grows outward and wraps itself around the bone. My first surgery was eight hours long and they broke my femur and they took out part of my tumor, they shaved part of it off. So then my second surgery was where they went in and they put a little camera in and looked around and they um, took my screws out. And my third surgery was where they went in and cut my hip flexor tendon to give the tension off of my tumor. My tumor has grown around my femoral artery and if that is cut during the surgery while they're trying to take the tumor out, then I will either lose a leg or my life. For many of her friends, Kyra is an inspiration and a role model because of her courage, optimism, and bravery. She's intelligent, so she's, she's strong. She's good-minded. Uh, all around, she's a beautiful person, really. She absolutely shows no signs of having any physical issues or any physical problems or any medical problems. The hardest thing to overcome has been watching my parents watch me go through this because it has hurt them more than it has ever hurt me. To many people, Kara's life story reads like a best-selling book, one filled with many lessons to learn from. Reporting for Hikino from Wailua High and Intermediate School, I'm CB. If you'd like to stay connected with what's happening on Hikino, log on to our Facebook page. It's full of photos and current info regarding the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hikino Can Do. It's a great way to get reminders on upcoming episodes. Now let's go back to Connections Public Charter School on Hawaii Island to see why their students have chosen to attend a charter school. I like how we have a small community. Um, everybody knows everyone else, and we have great teachers who are very personable with you. There's no, well, I don't know you that much, so I can't help you with this. Everybody knows, or all the teachers know how to help you. Everyone's really approachable. I can talk to the teachers about anything. Um, all the students know each other by name. I like that it's small, and like it's easier for like, if I don't learn something, I can ask the teacher and she's not she's usually not preoccupied and she can help a student and then come to me and help me out that way like I, I can make sure I learn everything that I need to learn. Moana Lewis Music Department has built a tradition of excellence for almost 40 years. They started construction on a long-awaited performing arts center. When it opens its doors in 2013, it will provide a showcase for the student musicians of our very own community. At Hana School, which celebrates 100 years this year, an even longer tradition continues. Ikaika Kaiwi tells us of three generations of one family that have created a lasting legacy. One hundred years ago, Hana School began serving the Hana community. Several generations of Hana residents have passed through the doors of the old Hana School as students. These students have taken pride in becoming alumni of this fine school. Many of the alumni have returned to teach or work at Hana School. I was born and raised here in Hana. I started kindergarten at the old Hana School the one across the Hana ballpark. I was a business teacher here for 21 years. And then I later became the uh, school registrar and I have been that for 11 years prior to my retirement from the Department of Education in 2007. My own children came to this school. My grandchildren have graduated from this school and I still have grandchildren attending this school. My daughter, who graduated from Hana High Elementary School is a teacher to the at this school. I think the first thing that influenced me to become a teacher would have to be my family, my parents and my grandparents. They're all educators. And um, I think that decision to become a teacher came because I really wanted to come back to Hana and um, give back to my community and to my school. 
what I thought I gained. Okay, culture and traditions are passed down. That's correct. Okay. The school is very important to me my family and to me I mean I work here I'm an employee um, not only an employee I'm a, an alum of the school so you know I have a lot of uh, interest vested in the school you know when you work someplace at, at a place you want to be proud of it proud of where you work and you, when you go to school someplace and you graduate from that place you want to be proud of that place so personally it's, it's very important to me the school is very important to me for my own two children, I want them to have that same experience that I had. Um, you know, your education is what you make of it. And you could go to the best schools, the private schools, or you could go to a public school. It's what you do with your education and the learning that's in front of you. And that's what I learned here. And um, that's what I want my kids to learn. Hana School welcomes the next generation of students into its school as it enters into the next 100 years of its existence. Hana School has endeared itself to so many who will never forget their time here. This is the Kaika Kaivi pouring from Hana K-12 School for Hikino. Well, that's it for this week's show. We hope you enjoyed the stories that we've shared from around our islands. So join us next week to see what the students of Hawaii can do. Only on Hikino and only on PBS Hawaii. We leave you now with a montage of the sights and sounds of Moanalua High School. Aloha! Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.